lovely back again um good discussion i've got for you today rob hopefully if you're more than willing to oblige as you usually are hopefully i'm gonna not make it too difficult for you i know you like to uh always have a bit of a complaint about the complexity of what i'm throwing your way um but i do like to keep you on your toes you all well all good very good mate thank you yeah good good fantastic right no further ado let's dive into it um we're talking today, we covered it a little bit um, in a previous discussion, a bit about the past, a bit about what causes your emetophobia. Um, but right now, I'm just sort of wanting to dive into in a bit further depth about the past and about how you create slash maintain your phobia. So a good example of today's topic is, and for anyone what I'm about to dive into, we've got a fantastic testimonial where we're sort of talking about all of this. Now, Rob, it's a testimonial that you did with an ex-client and now a coach we have on with the program, Lisa. Um, now, for anyone listening, Lisa was a emetophobia sufferer for a very long time. She's obviously now over it and past it. And in your discussion that you had with Lisa, you make it very clear that Lisa came and stayed with you for a few days. And during that time, she went from, you know, a full blown emetophobic sufferer to overcoming it in about three days. Now, for a lot of people listening into that, that might sound a bit unrealistic and maybe you're trying to, you know, blow some smoke up people. Right. But I want to dive into it. I want to, you know, I want to break that testimonial down a bit because it's, it's a really good discussion on allowing emetophobic sufferers to gain a more realistic appraisal over their phobia. So what's your take on it? How, how do you think that Lisa was able to do that? What, what was it that you guys did? Okay, so a little bit of context then. So Lisa was already a friend of mine and had dipped in and out of the program for probably a couple of years. And whenever she yep. passed through Cambridge, she'd come and we'd have a coffee and we'd have a chat and maybe a bit of a, a thrive session or something like that with the aim of getting her back on her feet again and um, you know, getting closer to her goal. And I jokingly, I jokingly, well, I thought it was jokingly at the time, I jokingly threatened her and said, look, if you are not over this bloody phobia by next January, I think I said, or next February, I said, you're going to come and stay with me for a week and I will beat it out of you. Yeah, As it happened, she wasn't over it by the next January or February. So we booked a week. I said, right, come and stay with me for a week and we'll get you over it in that week. Now, I must just make it clear. I, I just touched on it. I must clear. So she had been dipping in and out of the program for about two years. She had read the thrive program manual i don't know that the emetophobia manual specifically was out by that point it might have been but she, she'd read everything five or ten times right you know so she already understood the program she just wasn't doing it she wasn't applying it regularly enough to get the benefits so she'd she'd yep. have a, a bit of a blip or a bit of a bad spell and she'd throw herself into it for a, a couple of days here or a couple of days there or something but not enough for a long enough period of time to overcome the phobia completely and properly. So I said to her, right, come and stay with me for a week and we will beat it out of you. And I, I was sort of joking. So she turned up on, on a Sunday night and by Wednesday evening, she was completely over emetophobia and I'm you know totally 100% over emetophobia and has been ever since. And I would say that was yep. four, five, six six or seven years ago now that she did that and so you know how how is that possible I, am i am i suggesting to people that should be their goal in some way shape or form no not not at all not at all and i'm actually okay. almost loath to even talk about it because i don't want people thinking that we're advocating that we're not advocating it she didn't overcome it in three days she overcame it in two years she just put all the work right. in three days okay but it yep. is interesting yep. for several reasons okay so if you if you know how to 
overcome your phobia and what you need to do, you can overcome it very quickly. Okay, which is what Lisa did. You can overcome it very quickly. Because actually, if you think about it, your phobia, particularly, or any phobia, but, but certainly a metaphobia, is never more than two or three days old. Right? So if you remember when you had your emetophobia, Joe, even though yep. you had had it for years, mm. and, you know, if you ask any sufferer, they'll say, oh, I've had my phobia for 20 years, I've had my phobia for 50 years, my, fifth, my phobia is 40 years old. That's, that's not specific, that's not entirely true. The phobia, mm. let's say you still have yours today, the phobia you have right now, Joe, and the anxiety yep. and the fear that you are experiencing today, Friday, you have created over the last couple of days. Okay? okay. The yep. fear you're fearing today, experiencing today, and, and the checking and the counting and the safety-seeking behaviours and the, and the anxiety and the stress that you're going through today, you've created over the last couple of days. Okay. You're not experiencing yep. today something you created six months ago, okay? You experienced that six months ago, okay? The anxiety, yep. the emotions, the stress that you are experiencing today, you are creating today and for the last couple of days, okay? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's very, very recent. It's the thoughts that are in your mind and the emotions that you're generating very, very recently that are causing you to feel the way you feel. Yes, you might have been doing that for 10 years, but actually your emetophobia today isn't the result of eight years' worth of effort, for want of a better work word. It's the result yeah. of two or three yep. days of effort. You've been building this wall, been blowing air into this balloon for two to three days. So theoretically, if you were to do everything that's in the manual to do to overcome your metaphobia and you understood it completely technically you could overcome it in a few days okay don't advocate yeah. it because it's hard work and you put pressure on yourself and it's unnecessary why do that when you can do it yeah. fairly predictably in six weeks okay but yeah. people keep asking us you know how did lisa do it in three days how did she do it in three days she understood the program inside out and what happened when she came to stay at the farm was no we didn't have intense therapy no we didn't do intense thrive sessions i don't think we did a single thrive session what she did was yep. go and do something completely outside of her normal life for a few days we went for a mm -hmm. fly in an airplane we went and climbed a tower we went to the pub we talked about some stuff we, uh, i just kind of went about my normal life with a friend staying but because her mind was completely away from her emetophobia for three days, and of course she'd built herself up to it, you know, in her mind, this was her boot camp, she called it the boot camp. This yep. was her boot camp. So yep. she had so she arrived with the intention of overcoming her emetophobia. This is it now. I'm gonna stay at Rob's, I'm gonna do that this week. So that yep. her attitude, her intention, and everything else she was doing while she was there got her over it very, very quickly, and again, has never recreated it since. Well, she's never recreated it since because she's changed all the beliefs that were driving the thoughts in the first place. Okay? So yeah. we have somewhere in the region of, depending on what research you believe, right, some, let's say an average about 50,000 thoughts a day. Okay? That's about, if you get up at 8 and you go to bed at 10, that's about one thought every second. Most of them were unaware yep. of, okay. But even if you even if you snore snore, even if you saw a snapshot, a ten minute window of your thoughts for the day, you'd get a fairly good idea about the rest of them, wouldn't you? So of these fifty thousand yep. thoughts a day, most of metaphobes that we've asked um state that somewhere between eighty and ninety percent of their thoughts they believe that somewhere between 80 and 90% of their thoughts on a day-to-day -day basis are either directly or indirectly related to their emetophobia. And if you think about that, what that means is they are having somewhere in the region of 40 to 45,000 
scary, unhelpful, uh, um, black and white, catastrophic thoughts about their phobia every single day. That is what's keeping their phobia going. That is the machine yep. that is generating all the angst and all the fear and everything else. Okay, What Lisa did in those three days, she went from having 40 or 45,000 thoughts a day about emetophobia being horrible to having next to none. So it disappeared. Okay? And it disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. And once it, was, once it was disappeared, she changed her beliefs about it. Because if she didn't change her beliefs, it would come back. And we've talked on another podcast about why exposure therapy doesn't really work and isn't very helpful. Mm. And it's because if you if you don't change the beliefs, it, it's you're going to generate it again. Yeah. Yeah. So tablets can stop you brooding and ruminating about something, but if the underlying belief yep. is still there, the moment you stop taking the tablets, you know you're going to go back to creating the phobia again. So for Lisa yep. particularly. It was those 50,000 thoughts a day or those 40, 45,000 thoughts a day that went down to almost zero. And the, the relief and the sense of empowerment and the sense of control and calmness that you'd get from doing that was what led her to feel that she'd overcome it and, and that she'd reached that summit and she'd conquered that thing, which is incredibly empowering yeah which is why she's never gone back to thinking that same way again. She's thinking like, she thinks now the way a non-emetophobe thinks about vomit and, and sickness. Doesn't yep. think about yep. it. If um, you asked her, she would say, yeah, I could do it. I, I've done it and you know, it wasn't fun, but you know, don't lie awake at night worrying about it. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, no, I was just going to say in comparison, because obviously the way that Lisa eventually overcame her emetophobia in comparison to the thousands of people that have overcome it through going through the program, myself included, right? The difference between the two, and I would just like to sort of strike a bit of a comparison there for people listening in, um, you know, relating it to myself, relating it to what I see with clients all the time is, you know, I didn't go and stay with Rob and go up in his plane and get shaken around and all of these things in order to overcome my phobia. But what I was doing was I was still reducing those 50,000 thoughts a day. It took me a little bit longer than three days. But, you know, I wasn't going out of my way to do extreme things. You don't need to go out of your way to do, you know, big momentous things in order to overcome it. You just have to stop doing, you know, what I was doing was loads and loads of little things. I was forcing myself to eat a sandwich with my hands after not washing my hands, after being on public transport. You know, I was forcing myself to use my finger to open the train door instead of my knuckle. I was forcing myself to open up doors with my hand instead of the, the sleeve of my t-shirt and then carry on with my business anyway, because every single time I was choosing to use my sleeve to open the door of the toilet up, you know, I was telling myself, I need to do this to protect myself from being sick because being sick would be the worst thing in the world. Right. And every time I did that, I was keeping that alive. I was keeping the 50,000 thoughts or the majority of them, you know, all the way up here around catastrophic, unhelpful, lack of power, all of those kind of thoughts just around and around and around. As soon as I consistently worked on all of these little things that I was doing every single day that kept that belief alive, I pretty quickly over overcame it. And that's the same with the majority of, of what we see on a daily basis. So how, so what was your time frame, Joe, do you think then, when you did start to apply that on a daily basis yeah. consistently, from that point to when you were completely over it, how long do you think it took you? So I would say, I mean, I'm quite open to the fact that um, it took me a while initially because I was doing a, a lot of things wrong. I wasn't putting in enough effort. I wasn't understanding everything properly. But as soon as I really, similar to Lisa, really understood the program and started putting in all of the right kind of effort, I would suggest that it took me no longer than a month, right? And a month in comparison to the years and years and years I had emetophobia for, and hopefully the years and years and years I have left on this planet, a month is nothing to me, right? In order to actually overcome my phobia. Um, yeah, 
about a month, I would suggest. I would say that's about right. It's about average, I think. You know, it takes people a yeah. few weeks um, to work themselves through the manual and to understand the manual and, and to practice the techniques and the actions. And then, of course, once you've done that, that's when your time really starts. And and yeah. and want and you have to get good at, at practicing the techniques, and you have to robustly challenge those unhelpful, you know, thoughts and beliefs. But as an example, when you were using your sleeve to mm. open the door or turn the tap on or whatever, the biggest problem with yeah. that, of course, is the fact that you're trying to protect yourself from something, and that something mm. that you're trying to protect yourself from must be horrible and awful and devastating. Otherwise, you wouldn't be protecting yourself from it, right? Most oh, of us have exactly. you know, yeah. one or two locks on our doors that we lock at night, okay? But if you've got six locks on mm. your door and you're checking all six of them, you know, it begs the question, you know, why? What are you, what are you frightened of? What are you scared of? Yeah. So it's these little, yep. the, the little things that people do are quite often the things that are keeping the big thing alive. Yeah, and while and while while a person is thinking in a, in a, in such a catastrophic way that they could not cope, they would not be able to cope if this thing happened. While they maintain that belief, and whilst they are feeding that belief with thousands of thoughts every day, it's very very difficult to overcome anything, not alone emetophobia, because of course a thousand times a day you're telling yourself, "There's no way I could tolerate that." There's no way I, I'd rather yeah. die than do that. Whilst at the same time you're trying to overcome it, so that that's it's not going to work that way. Once you get all your ducks in a row, and you're doing all, all the right things at the right time and to the right amount, it doesn't, you know, as you say, it doesn't take very very long to to completely, you know, smash those beliefs out the water. Yeah, and and for some emetophobia sufferers, the idea of you know what I just said, right? The idea of eating a sandwich with their bare hands after touching a load of things could potentially be way out of the realm of their, you know, possibility right now. And to be honest, it, it would have been for me when I first started going through the program. So what I'm saying is, as you begin to build up essentially how powerful you feel around your phobia, which is done by going through the program in a very gradual step-by-step -step way, you're not having to jump, it doesn't feel like you're jumping in at the deep end anymore. You know, what felt like a million miles away when I first started the program, eating a sandwich with my unwashed bare hands, by the time I'd worked all my way through it, you know, it felt like I was dipping my toes in at the shallow end. It wasn't that challenging, yeah, but initially it would have been. It should all feel like small steps. Yes. If, they, yes. if, they follow, if they follow the manual, it, it should all feel like small, achievable, steps you know steps that are going to get you yeah. closer to your goal every day but not steps that are jumping you so close that that you're going to create stress and anxiety out of them as well there's no point in doing that it's going to that's a step back as well isn't it yeah yeah absolutely it, it, it's not about exposure it's not about throwing you in at the deep end with your hands tied together that's not what we do it is about you know gradually teaching you to swim and safely and carefully pushing you along and along until you feel confident to swim laps around in the deep end um, and when you can do that very quickly you'll begin to realize that actually what you believe to be the worst thing in the world and you know deeply catastrophic may not actually be the case mm -hmm.